Hey, good people. How are you? Good to be back with you. Ah, yes, had an interesting uh, last week. How's your Mercury retrograde gone, as the, the ladies will normally explain to you? Anyway, good to be back. Uh, Mercury retrograde's not been too kind to Bitcoin or crypto. Um, since our last uh, chat, we've been warning about the concerns you should have about crypto. Uh, and that there would be downside. So let's just uh, take in what we've got here. This is Bitcoin, it's on uh, Phoenix. So grab uh, your My Accumulation Zone. So we wanna just highlight a couple of key points around this. So typically, how do things get broken down? When we were on the upside, we said this was a falling wedge, you're likely to come out, pause, it's a continuation pattern, you're gonna come out to the upside. Again, you made your head and shoulder target, that's the purple line hidden there. We said, it's a falling wedge, accumulate along the lows, you're likely to come out, and we traded the break of the falling wedge to the upside. Two upside breaking patterns, one that was continuation, this was continuation, one that was a reversal of a very harsh sell-off back to the upside. So note, even the falling wedges have different contexts. One was continuation, first one. Second one, reversal of a head and shoulder after post-target run. Then, when you came to the same accumulation zone and you were hanging heavy in it, um, we said this is not a bottoming structure. This is not a bottoming structure. Um, and we highlighted that initially, firstly, we said this would go down only to be watch the Fed inflate uh, assets again with a very disappointing quarter point raise and no declared date of tightening, only to later uh, watch it fizzle all the way back down and then for them to actually uh, drip through and for them to then do half a point and declare June as tightening. And then to further add fuel to the sell-off. And this is very typical technically. So there's narrative fundamentals and narrative on this side. This is technicals. Technically speaking, this was never bottoming. This was always looking like downside continuation. Even when we broke up, we were ejected on the 47.5. That was the legacy neckline of that head and shoulders. An immense amount of play time at 42. You can see the 42 line here. Should put go back to TG Pink on that one. Um, smashing through that, going right through the diagonals of this flag. Very, very central. And it was clear that short was being built up at an aggregate uh, size of 42K. Um, on Bitcoin, potentially by other actors. We don't know, we can speculate. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time there. But we have a live triggered head and shoulder. The only way it got invalidated, we told you, was that we'd pivot if, it was, if we ever ran 52. Then we're wrong about this not being reversal. Generally, continuation is your friend. Continuation of what? Continuation of that hard selling flag into there. So this is the scribble and draw that we're giving you to try explain. Now, when you have a very thick layer of that has been support a number of times, as we had with this accumulation zone, let's pivot to uh, here and change colors a little bit. Accumulate, accumulate, continuation. Accumulate, accumulate, reversal back up, reversal. Now, downside continuation, there was a previous still an effort to accumulate but they didn't have the same power and what you got was this basing ascending grind line like this and even over here when we were leaking out again 40k when there was a lot of selling at the 42 we know that the aggregate bitcoin shorts were being built up on that 42 it is a neckline for this head and shoulder what did you then get you you break a seam of accumulative support zone with momentum that is an hvf method law so we expect key levels to be run and to be broken with momentum think of the horse that has to on a show jumping that has to clear the obstacle with a water feature on it it comes it runs it jumps over the hurdle lands in the water runs through it and then it kind of canters and relaxes a little bit after so typically price behavior break with momentum after the run through exhaustive because you've done a lot in a short time markets are never simple they never just straight line down in perpetuity 
So you get relief rally. Eventually you get some buying support. This is close, 257412. This is a very significant line. This line over here is our first cup gold nugget original target that was overperformed to that gave the 64K that your overperformance trumpet said get out over here at round about the 55s. Um, and this was another key level that's been sitting quietly here. That was the first sell signal in a macro bull after a two and a half year continuation as you popped out of that uh, overperformance trumpet there. And if you'd stayed out of the markets from there on, you would have been nothing around, uh, let's get the actual price. I think it was either 55 or 59. I think it could even have been 59. Because you got a ride, 55, yeah. Around about 55. And when we started to let go, we got a bit of a bounce on the 55. When we let go of that 55 and came down, we were reverting very bearish. We could see this potential happening. You had the skid into the 42 and then the rally. This was never convincing as a bottom either. Also a bit of a flag, a smaller flag. So you break seams of support with momentum and then you rally back into them. And this is a sucker's rally, generally on balance of probabilities. Listen to what I'm saying. Can't guarantee you that. It is my personal bias. So it's like a, the sentiment indicator. There is no 100% and 0%, but it's deep in the 60s going on 75s, uh, leaning even 80s even, that on balance of probabilities, you will rally into the space only to sell and make a new low to that uh, wick low. Okay? So in the same way, you did, let's clear this face a little bit, you did get hammers over here and everyone would have said, bottom, bottom, bottom. You, and you did get a hammer there, bottom, bottom, bottom. You've run all of those. And we did suggest in previous videos that we expected you would run these lows as well. That has already happened now. So keep on keeping on. Continuation should be your default position until reversal occurs or until you get very convincing reversal structure to say, we'll go neutral now. At the moment, this is just a snapback rally. What typically do you get when you get this, these kind of structures? You'll get a rising wedge, as an example. You could get another flag, as an example. Uh, you could even get quite a violent snapback because we can have a little pause of weakness. You could get a violent snapback and then a hard sell and then another snapback and a hard sell and then like that. And then you can set up a structure. So that can be very confusing and generally a difficult trading period. Best to do nothing. And then later it'll clarify itself and you get another sell off. You bounce on our 25.7 wall and then you could spill lower. Um, so rallies, what is the call? In our opinion, both alts, because Bitcoin is the god market of crypto um, and macro is the god to Bitcoin at the moment, particularly, this is a very risk on risk off environment. We're going to talk about the inflation trade and the fear trade. We've just had a lot of fear trade dominance. Now, there is a pause coming for the dollar dominance. Many people that are in crypto don't realize they're trading pairs. This is like trading Forex. You're trading pairs. Bitcoin USD. How many times have we said that? It's not Bitcoin on its own. It's not all about on-chain. I'm seeing the same people coming out with their on-chain analysis plan B, um, on-chain this, on-chain that. You had localized low by all measures, da 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 Look, they may prove them to be right, but they don't do any macro analysis. They don't do anything about the dollar. And I'm going to give you a long explanation on what I see is happening on the macro. Uh, with regards to the dollar in a bit. But before I do that, I want to finish on the, the crypto charts. Could there be, so first of all, let's just recap those targets. These are technical targets that could be performed too. The blue that you're seeing there is the apex high of 69K and is a bear flag, first bear flag, smaller, which is why we called that's not bottoming, uh, and even up top on this high, we said this is not a bottoming structure. You're likely to go lower, and you did. That you have a head and shoulder that's triggered with a neckline that is a known level where shorts were being accumulated at 42,000. And you then had uh, this flag, the Fed. And let me say another thing. Where there are big institutions, 
that let's just, I'm going to throw some names out, and this is not an accusation, there's no proof or evidence. Let's say we say BlackRock, let's say we say Citadel. As examples, that's not to say they're involved or not involved. Um, these people have people that are, when you're a Fed chairman or even on the Fed board, when you go to cash out, you get hired as an advisor for a Citadel, a BlackRock. Go look where Ben Bernanke works nowadays. These are the kind of work relations. This is where they get paid for what they did while they were government employees on government salaries. So there is a, you know, there's a special little, it's kind of like the pharmaceutical industry and the FDA. There's a bit of a rotating door. You do what you're required to do at the FDA and then you go become a board director at Pfizer, etc., whatever, whatever. Um, so there's an element of that. And these guys wouldn't have built a short position at 42K if the only trade was, okay, it's going to drop to 30. We did have a wick low of 26, but essentially for any consistent volume, we have clustered around a legacy target right here that we've given you as a key level that was just through the 30K levels. So you have the round number of 30K, you have the, which is the blue number, you have the target of 29 on the head and shoulders. This is a cluster of level and you're going to pause. And this is key levels of significance. And the next major level is the 25 and our 25.7, which is why I've drawn any possible scenarios, running those two, having a small rally, and then possibly going lower. Uh, and the 18 would probably be another bounce point if we're getting there. So the, going back to um, the, the likes of Citadel and BlackRock, they don't get short to trade something from 42K to 31. They get short to trade something from 42k to maybe 21 or sub 21, like 15, like 18, and even potentially 12. In other words, it's my expectation they have a reasonable understanding of what the Federal Reserve is likely to do on account of the rotating turnstile and what they do. They always just seem to be very well informed. Um, it's kind of like Nancy Pelosi's trading um, statements. She just just seems to call those earnings calls good or bad real well. Um, and the cynicism that I have tells me that I don't think it's over for the Bitcoin downside. Um, and that's not going to be a popular message. Uh, and I'm not here to give popular messages. I'm here to tell you exactly what I think in terms of uh, everything. What would be the most bullish pattern structure that won't see an 18, a 15, or a 12, or right down to first cup gold nuggets uh, support bases? The way that Bitcoin could go down, but not much further down, and then begin a recovery is the following. So let's talk something a little bit less cataclysmic. This on its own cannot be judged for be bottoming. We could have, out of our original hunt volatility trumpet break, which gave you the 55 as the final exit, and that was the best possible exit, uh, then you had the 47.5 neckline, and then you eventually got to 69, you would have probably FOMO'd back in um, to your great error, only to come back down. Um, but let's take it from here. This descending megaphone structure on this bull pole, could see you run, bounce a few times here, and have a final sell off, let's say 21, around the 21 level. And then you could rally. And then you could be in what I describe as a continuation megaphone structure after a very lengthy travel from your capping ascending grind line up top there, all the way down to your basing descending grind line down there. And it will be bullish because of your splitter being uh, slightly to the downside in angle. So it is a descending megaphone. That could be a situation where you would top out, uh, bottom out at around 21 and not make those targets. That could happen. Now I need to take you macro. Let's talk macro. Um, by the way, before we leave and go to the full macro, now, I'll come back and finish on the, the alts and some of the shorts we've called and how they've done uh, and what you've missed. So here's something where you need to understand how the world works. 
So, Triffin's Dilemma. What is Triffin's Dilemma? Triffin's Dilemma, uh, and I'm going to reduce this to a very simple uh, explanation because not all of you are um, macro-technical, but Triffin's Dilemma is the situation where America is a consumer economy. We buy stuff. We buy stuff on debt. We buy stuff with our cash. We buy stuff. And as a nation, we are net buyers. So there are net imports from manufacturer, producer nations, such as China, for example, and others, Germany and Europe, for example, Samsung is Korean, etc. So they are producer nations, and you have this big consumer nation. Now, that doesn't mean America doesn't produce things. They just do much less manufacturing. But Apple kind of holds the IP, and you can argue they produce, but it's manufactured offshore iPhones, etc. But they are a net importer, generally, of consumer items. The others are net exporters, like Germany, uh, Japan, uh, Korea. So Japanese are not particularly known for consuming. They're high uh, saver nations. So what actually happens is, in this global world of producer and consumer, you get an environment where, let's just draw our, um, we'll put this on nice and clear and we'll steal a little bit of space from on the bottom of our Bitcoin chart. There is America red because you are a negative importer and here is, let's go green, um, the other country, nation states of the world, uh, Korea, China's a big one, uh, Japan, you know, etc. net producers of items. What actually gets exported by America is dollars. So you export dollars, they earn dollars, and they send you Samsung phones, Toyotas, and anything that's assembled in China. Um, so, when we kill demand in America with the Federal Reserve, rather than fighting inflation, which will be a secondary thing that he wants to do, he wants to protect the dominance of the dollar for as long as possible. So, as, a, as the BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, um, particularly Russia and China, um, are thinking of alternative monetary systems, getting yuans. Don't forget, uh, Gaddafi was killed, and this was recently released, Hillary Clinton emails, on account of his desire to establish an African dinar backed by gold. Gaddafi was killed in written email. Your control structure murdered a man that they'd made friends and peace with after a while. Tony Blair visited them. They created a war, turned his country upside down on account of his desire to establish a gold-backed currency. That is not even up for debate. It's a fact. That is assassination, murder, and invasion on account of sound money principles being pursued. And the citizens of Libya lived a far more quality orientated life than say the particularly the woman for example than say a woman in Saudi Arabia that if she gets raped can be buried uh, and pregnant up to her head and stoned so let's not talk about morality too much from the west but that's what happened now the bigger nations of Russia and China are working because we cancelled Russia from the swift they've got to have alternatives so Whilst they are establishing alternatives, one of the most aggressive things America can do is to create a dollar dominance cycle, a dollar dominance cycle. This is something we've been calling for a long, long time. When the euro was launched, and that was 99 going into the 2000, and the actual currency was launched, because it was seen for a period initially, not so much at all anymore, uh, as a fatally flawed currency, um, as a potential um, rally, uh, rival, let me rather say, it was absolutely killed. The dollar dominance policies were pushed and the euro fell to 80 cents. One euro bought 80, 80 American cents on its launch, just to show who was boss, uh, who is the King Canute of the current uh, currency environment. And I might just find uh, a chart to replicate uh, and bring that to your attention. In fact, this unfortunately, this particular one doesn't go far away back enough, uh, but you can see already where it came. Let's just get a different Euro USD. Uh, Saxo sometimes gives you a great deal of history. 
Uh, let's get all there, please. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So here you can see all the way down, what is that value? 82 cents. You see that? By the time it was launched, an, uh, an attack of American strength with the forthcoming announcement. The currency went into circulation. It already existed digitally before then. Um, but you actually had currency notes in ATMs round about here. And only round about the recession post dot com boom of 0102 did you get the first upside HVF and then you got this huge overperformance run uh, on the Eurozone. So what are what is America uh, what is the Fed doing on behalf of uh, supposedly Americans although it doesn't really work for Ameri Americans um, it is currently and I'm going to keep that chart actually let's bring that one because the others don't have the length of tenor that I like uh, Saxo, by the way, is pretty good with uh, history. Come on, bring him up. Um, so what is awaiting the attempts by other nations to establish separate payment mechanisms is an attack of dollar strength, an absolute attack of dollar strength. And this is going to be pursued simply by deviating f uh, interest rates policies and they will go and kill their own consumer. So A, as a consumer, they're going to kill the American consumer. What does that do? That means less buying of produce in those green box nations that I've already described. So what does that mean? Recession for the Fed policy is going to export a recession for all producer nations. Can you see that? By killing their consumer, they will produce a recession for all other nations, producer nations specifically. So Germany, uh, you know, Japan, Korea, China, these places are going to have a lot of the Asian nations. A lot of them are very, very uh, built based around um, manufacturing. Um, so this is going to be terrible for their economy, their consumer. They are not going to make money. Further to which you have the current Shanghai shutdowns, which have led to a massive reduction down in production. So you have the Fed killing demand and this is why I refer to the current economic climate as hyper stagflation. Hyper stagflation. Policies to kill uh, consumer uh, power in America and policies in China to reduce total production. This will, is an attempt to maintain pricing power. Because if you're reducing demand normally and supply stays the same, prices are forced to drop. China doesn't want those prices to drop, so they will match the, the reduced demand with reduced supply by enforced close downs. This is what I call a tit for tat economic policy that is being played out. So, American consumer, who is the biggest importer of goods and goods and to some degree services and biggest exporter of dollars is going to stop sending dollars offshore shortage of dollars offshore so this great sell-off in the Dixie was the provision not just in America but globally of seven trillion of dollars and it killed it that got soaked up and absorbed in the collapsing assets and the welfare programs and all the stimmy checks and all of those things that got, uh, <coughs> and of course, the oil price was part and parcel of that great collapse, which we called to single digits um, on the cash market. Uh, in anticipation of all of this, we saw the dollar being crushed and we also saw oil being crushed. Now, what is actually happening is energies are stubbornly high. Energies are stubbornly high. That is very inflationary. By killing demand as a consumer, they are, to some degree, also reducing the current expansion in growth of inflation and they're reducing the flow of dollars to the producer nations. China is trying to maintain pricing power by reducing the supply through stoppages, aggressive keeping ships at sea, various other mechanisms so that they at least hold pricing power. So you're still paying high price items for imported items, but the flow is more spotty because the demand is more spotty. 
Um, so what does this mean? What does this mean and what's all of this got to do with crypto or risk on, risk off and many other assets and things? So we have been net bull dollar dominance. We've said uh, people like Brent Johnson have the right idea at the wrong time and the time will come. We've then said the time came with this reversal here. We expected an RL2, a lower two point here and a move up. You are in a breakout and we anticipate 111 to be run and potential for that to be overperformed to on the dollar index. This is a really aggressive move guys. You took out a key level of 100 that has been a capping level for so long. We have been under. Last time we traded consistently above 100. You've got to go back to January 03. This was a little bit of an iceberg moment. That was a single wick moment. 100 on the Dixie is a huge, huge value uh, for dollar dominance. And this is the end of the falling wedge. That was dollar exporting plenty of dollars and killing its value slowly and being a net purchaser to now scarcity of dollars internationally. Scarcity of dollars internationally. Remember most debt is being based in dollars and you need your interest on that debt. Not just the capital repayments, you need to be able to pay it. That requires new dollars to be exported. So this is why we've called for FX emerging markets crises and this is why we're also now saying this is going to pivot to an Asian currency crisis. But inside every macro move are pauses and pullbacks at some point. Nothing is ever straight uh, forward. So what has been one of the drivers of the um, events has been the collapse of the debt system. So we again, we have been the sole people for two years shouting that this final capitulation, this is the monthly, this final capitulation in rates was a trend ending event. You know what it was to do with March 2020. This was the Volcker year's high of yield. This is the interest rates. So interest rates have been in a long term 40 year. It has been the Goldilocks economy that buy the damn dip, both on equities but also in bonds because yields just kept going down. Bonds value is inverse to that. They go up on reducing uh, yield. When the yield had their final capitulation, log scale chart this, we called trend end once we saw the US snapping back. We then had our upside HVF, massive overperformance. Where are you now? Now I'm just going to take the eyeball off. You can see an inverted uh, HVF there with a clear funnel level all around the 3%. Three is a magic number, guys. I can hardly hold it on this hand. Had it up there. Uh, three is a magic number on the yield side uh, certainly we've not been consistently above three the last time you were consistently above three was way back in 08 the prior to the great financial crisis you had a depression in 08 07 08 09 010 11 it was all a depression you have been on such stimulative monetary policy since then it is a depression they never told you it's a depression the great financial crisis, the great recession. No, it's a depression. Bank failures, two years of negative growth in most nations, apart from the ones where they cheated and created a 0.1. Most people don't know. Two quarters. Everybody knows two quarters is a recession below, uh, below zero. Two years is a depression. It was a depression. Um, by hook and crook, they cheated stats. It was a depression. And you've been in depression levels of stimulus ever since. So let's just take the eye off for a second. You are on a tiny shooting star at the moment, which represents a pause, but not a chronic radical one, but a pause. Why? Why would you be pausing here? Because you have run the three level. You have run the three level that was resistance a couple of times here and here. And these are at major crises points where you started to reflate to go back a little bit of recovery bounces and each time you got to three crisis we got to go even lower 2019 repo rate issues spill 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 into the march 2020 lows you know the reason why so every time we had a crisis the rates fell away and we've been had plenty crises so you can see all of these rejections so you've come here and you're going to rest now what does that mean yields go down for a little bit um, and let's just take that away. So yields come down uh, for a little bit. That means the bonds get a small bid, but not for long. 
we will go above this. Uh, we are reasserting and reconfirming the fact that we call the end of the debt market. For the debt system to fail, debt must start to lose value. For the old horse must start being pulling up lame to justify moving you onto the new horse that will be central bank digital tokens. That is the way of the world. You've got to show the death. So we have this nationalized game where you get dollar dominance, kill the consumer in America, and you kill the producer in the East. If they are reducing supply, making less money, their currencies fall. You, at the same time as the Fed, Jay Powell, are pushing interest rates up on your debt and turning the screws. Your currency looks stronger. It pays more interest. It is going up faster. You cause FOMO like crypto. The new crypto markets are the macro. People have never seen a destabilized financial system. It's always been controlled and held within range. The new crypto movements is actually in macro. Look at this move in debt. This is huge moves in debt, guys. You don't know uh, what you're looking at because you haven't experienced it. That is a huge upward move. The move in the dollar index is huge. The new crypto market is in fact uh, in macro. So with this larger game being plan played out, it doesn't matter what plan B's on-chain model says. That is all playing in the little world of the tiny paper boat that is crypto in the bay. That used to be a quiet, calm bay where everything was about how good the, what the boat was handling um, the conditions to now a tsunami. It doesn't matter. It's a paper boat. It's getting swamped. It's over. So this is, uh, this is the key point. Now, so you're going to have a rest. What does that mean? Rally for Bitcoin? Maybe a rally for the U.S. indices and the equities. Maybe a rally for ARK. Um, to be fair and disclosure, I am short. I've got puts on ARK. You can see a bit of a wick. Of course, it's done a round trip. But let me just highlight something to you. Unfortunately, we can't get um, a 24 month easily. Let me just try one more time. Months. Let's see if it'll allow me to do 24. Nah, and it doesn't have a year. Uh, one of you guys are smarter than me will show me. I'm going to show you that ARC, for example, the banner boy of growth tech. Let's take the eye off here, just take those lines. If you draw a candle, and we talk about macro time frame, candlestick analysis will give you an idea of markets to an incredibly good level. Let me just draw for you what you're actually seeing. So the last three months candle the if I were to draw a three, my apologies, this is 12 months. So each one of these represents a year. If I were to draw a three year candle for arc for you, the open is there. The current close is here. Let's color it in for you. There you go. There's your candle. And this is your wick. The low of that wick is there. You see it? That's your close of your current box. That's your open. And the high is there. You are sitting on one of the biggest shooting stars on a three year time frame. That is a shooting star. Now, typically, if you're a practical, technical candlestick trader, you would wait for the run of the low and you would go short. Now, for me, I'm already short. I can tell you that because this is a very big time we're talking about a three-year candle what was the context a shooting star to be a proper shooting star should be on at the top of a movement to the upside here is a hammer on the one year right there and you've been trading up 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 into that shooting star and at one point you are up top here after seven trillion chasing into growth exponential everything and now you are here how do you think the next three-year candle looks? My suggestion, go look at a Blackberry, a Polaroid, uh, a number of other type charts to see. But this is not an upside continuation. It's a three-year reversal. And it's quite easy to see. You should not be calling bottoms. So many people, oh, it's gone fallen so far. Ask the guys that bought Luna uh, at $28 that later saw it trade um, God knows how many f zeros, fractions of a cent. 
Just because it's cheap don't mean it ain't getting cheaper. It may not have the value uh, that you see it. So that is one technical uh, chart. But you would say, Arc is a bit exceptional, Francis. You know, it kind of, you know, it's a pile of rubbish. What about, you know, the fangs? You know, that's real, real markets, real everything. And by the way, it will rally. You can see from this week, it will probably have a rally, but that doesn't mean it won't make a head and shoulders of some extensive uh, level. What about that? Well, let's take a look at your New World Order online retailer. Uh, that is a head and shoulders, by the way. It was a reversal on a small time frame, super quick. And that's already, I would say it's already performed to target, uh, but it also represents a prob probable turning point. But if we go up to those same giddy uh, timelines, we take the log scale off that because it doesn't look so bad when you log scale it. This is a similar thing. This is a similar thing. You take the last three years, if we could do 36 months as a candle, what is the candle? Oh, it's slightly better than arc. It would be green because it opened there. Let's draw it for you. I'll go super fat here. There's your open. This is your candle body. To your close. And then we go to the wick. How does your wick look like? Well, the wick goes to the downside to there, your low, and to your upside to there, your high. This is just a shooting star with a green candle instead of a red. How do you think your consumer is going to be spending on Amazon? in the environment where they keep tightening rates, equities are going down, housing prices are starting to go down and will go lower and housing payments will go lower. This is a debt shakeout. This is where they will, they've pumped and now they're going to shake you out on the dump. You're going to be a forced seller. That's, that's how it is as far as we're concerned. Um, and by the way, it, you want to have a look at Netflix? Boy, oh boy. That's a shooting star of some note as well. Now, some of you will say, yeah, but, yeah, but Netflix. Well, we can take the last one, two, three, four, five years. You can take a five-year candle analysis and your open was there. You would go in red and you'd have this tiny body. Now, tiny candle body like that. And how's your black wicks looking? This is the shooting star from hell. Wick down there, super hyper valuation down there. Now, candlestick charting says, do not a buyer be. This thing can go a very long way down. In fact, it could even go even longer down and eventually get bought out by Microsoft or whatever the case may be. Um, so the fact that it's been allowed to be hit this far uh, tells you a lot. Growth, this it's not a growth company. They're losing subscribers. They're just a loss-making huge company making expensive content that they can't justify the cost for. They either have to up premiums and lose their base, or they have to reduce the amount of content they do and lose their base. And they're already losing their base. <laughs> so trust continuation. So in this technology-based environment of growth stocks, that things that don't deliver earnings, this is a very, very bitter harvest that has to play out. People don't understand. We could go down, down, and down. I want to actually go to uh, Zero Hedge and just highlight a key thing for many people. So, if you go, I'm premium on the market here. Uh, sentiment bottom, no sir, I don't believe. Wait till it gets worse. Core inflation peaked. No, sir. I don't believe so. Go look at the oil price. So we'll, de we'll take alternative opinions on a number of this. Uh, the valuation matrix that I wanted to see, actually, it wasn't in the market here. It was in the articles. Growth bubble has burst was uh, retail sales growth growing. That I can certainly confer with. Hedge funds dump tech and piled into. Lots of bot Twitter profiles being found. That's interesting, isn't it? Uh, so Musk has, has 
don't forget, Musk may well be using this Twitter acquisition as a, an excuse um, to exit his Tesla. We are very concerned for Tesla now. 100,000 more recalls. Uh, sorry, it was a couple of articles ago, away uh, ago. So let me just find, uh, and your oil price surge. So peak inflation is going to be the new transitory inflation statement. Another lie to be caught out. Peak inflation. You don't just start rallying back up um, and diesel shortages. I'm sorry, that doesn't point to peak inflation. Guys, I lost that article from Zero Hedge, which was illustrating that the percentage of market cap, and I'll find and I'll tweet it out, I apologize, uh, I thought it would be easy to locate, but it was illustrating that even post-crash on the NASDAQ, you are at a higher percentage market cap to GDP than you were at the peak of the dot-com. The peak of dot com was 186%, and you're at around uh, 220 at the moment uh, percent to the uh, dot com high. So valuations have never been more extended. Thanks, of course, to all of the Federal Reserve's um, money spending. So overall, we are seeing the likelihood, in our opinion, that the uh, indices markets, on particularly all of them, but particularly tech, are going to fall substantially. Um, here is the NASDAQ, here's the IXIC. Uh, this is the absolute blow off. What an HVF that was down here. This is on a yearly, this is a year for the year. This has been a non stop run, just, to, just so that you have some perspective. January the 10th, 1291, and today, 16,000. So you were at 1,291. You have 10 x plus another 12 to 16, you're talking about four, another third uh, on top of that. Uh, it is unbelievable and unprecedented. If we go down to the daily, I will show you, in fact, maybe weekly we'll do, uh, I will show you that we have a draw for a head and shoulder uh, over here. Yes, hammer, yes, green candle, even a rally possibly up to these levels, but later a run of this target and potentially a 1.618 down leg for a third leg could easily bring you to 8,000. You could still have a, another rally and then sell off again further to the downside in the tech uh, realm. Bitcoin, crypto, currently while the debt system is slowly unraveling is a risk off environment and is trading like a risk on asset. That means bad news further downside. For those of you that think, no, but the NASDAQ could never go to 8742 have a rally and even go lower again. Let me just show you what's happened to Chinese tech and their head and shoulders. It has performed to target and is trading further down. Remember, these are also smart people. These are smart companies. Yes, you might say it's communism, da 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 da. These are smart people in a smart climate. They were sitting at 108 and now they're sitting at 43. That is a brutal correction. Um, in terms of their tech market. Of course, you get a rally after a target as well, and then you can go lower. You could have another head and shoulders. We call this nestling of head and shoulders, by the way. You could have another head and shoulders post a rally and go lower still. Um, this sounds uber bearish. Everybody's thinking, oh, wow, you're just a terrible, you know, bad news. To kill a debt system, you have to kill the debt. You have to see it start to come off. And the reaction of America is to drive strength into the dollar. This is why you've had a seven sigma move on the USD yen that we uh, were behind calling at 107. We've called for a target of 136. Now it doesn't sound near as crazy to be calling for those numbers uh, on the uh, USD yen. So let's just show you that as well. Uh, we've called for similar Asia-based currency collapses that include the Korean one and many others. So the FX markets are becoming the new crypto markets. Here was the breakout at a 110. You could have accumulated shorts in and around the 100, 108, 109. Um, our stop was at 107. This is where you are now on a monthly target. You are sitting quietly. Look at that ripper. That is huge, huge. Huge. I know in the crypto market you think, yeah, it's not 115 to 131. That's not huge. 
It absolutely is for a market of this scale that has been in a trading range and tightening for the better part of, from that high, since 2015 to only break out uh, the back end of last year and really get motoring right here, right now. Overall, 136 still to come with overperformance. You're going to get more upside to the dollar. You're going to get more financial warfare from the West, particularly through the, the dollar complex, that is going to lean and it's going to export the inflation to all the rest of the world, Asian nations and Europe. Because as the euro weakens as well against the dollar, what that actually means is your oil that is being purchased is not only going up in dollars uh, prices, it's also going nominally up in terms of its cost. Uh, add the dollar appreciation onto that, and in terms of your euro price of oil, it's gone up immensely. In terms of your yen price of oil, it's gone up immensely. Remember, these nations are not uh, blessed with large energy resources. None of uh, China, Japan, Korea, and Euroland have the great resources that uh, the oil producing nations have or Russia has. Here you see it working its way back up, well away from the $100 zone. Uh, 114, you're looking at 74 on Brent. For a while there, uh, WTI was even slightly more expensive. If you have a look at, oh, maybe it's just oil. Energy complexes is your inflation trade, your best of your inflation trade. So if you have natural gas longs and oil longs, and then you have the fear trade, which is dollar dominance longs, when you are in market fear and energy is coming down a little bit, it will be a partial hedge for you. And you'll make your money on the USD JPY. You'll make your money on your shorts of Bitcoin uh, because it's all going to be leaning on it. Your shorts on tech stocks, etc. That is the fear trade. Then when you get a pause, as we are getting now, because the 10-year is having a little bit of a rest after, and the 10-year debt was driving, was the real driver behind the dollar dominance. The squeeze of the differential in yield on debt has been a driver and the FX markets are the release valve for that difference pressure. But it's not gone too far back. We hit a, hit a high on the debt of 3.2. We're still here at 2.9. So whilst this is a little bit of a broadening uh, structure, you see I'm highlighting it. We square up. We're in this funnel from a legacy sell-off, I showed you this chart on the bigger time frame, why this 3% is such a, 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 a seminal level. But we will consolidate here for a while. Your Bitcoin may rally. Your equity indices may be flat and rallying mildly up. Light volume is my suspicion. And then we go again. Debt continues its devaluation. The yields continue to climb. TLT continues to sell off and the dollar continues to get stronger. And we eventually have a blow-off event where everybody runs into dollars, whilst the perceived enemies, the BRIC nations, particularly Russia and China, are establishing their own. They get the additional pressure of a strong dollar and the commodity pricing that goes with it in terms of oil and everything else. This environment is not conducive to strong Bitcoin. This environment is not conducive to a high beta alts having a great time. So let's just touch on a couple of the going, taking this all back to crypto after a little bit of a lesson on how money moves around the world. Crow has made its downside target, but it's going to pause and get a rally here for sure. But I think it overperforms to the downside. So we have shown you the structure before. Maker is yet to make a target and we have a very big downside for it. We have a very big downside and it's currently squeezing up. We're talking about sub 300 in our opinion on Maker. Uh, it's a bigger structured uh, pattern. Um, let me just de-log that because it's kind of cranky. Make it log, I'm afraid. Uh, there we go. Rescale it. Uh, you had a couple of spikes back to the funnel. Kind of a skittish, difficult one to hold, but it's traded up and now it's fizzled back down. This is not a bullish environment generally. We looked at that and we said, it looks like it might go a little higher. But now it's resisting at these cluster levels. I don't trust any of these for upside. Rallies should be sold for the downside. We also gave you Tezos. 
Again, rolling over, rising wedge, it's now rolling over. But let's have a look at the bigger time frame for the Tezos. It is pausing after running a second interim. It has an outstanding target. We expect it to trade below the dollar price line. We'll check out the Bitcoin versus the IXI. In fact, let's go to that now. So we've just shown you Tezos as another one. We also gave you Algorand. I'll come back for it. Let's have a look at that BTC IXI. An alert has just triggered for this. We're asking when will, if ever, Bitcoin outperform the tech in terms of this de great deflation? I'm not sure it will. We saw the DeFi. I try to find something bullish for you. This could be a buying point where Bitcoin does slightly better, even if it's going down, than tech that is going down. Tech is hyper overvalued. There can come a point where Bitcoin represents better relative value, that this could still see a third impulse and we could still break up. But also, let me remind you, we asked the question, I try to find something bullish for you, uh, and we asked the same question on the DeFi, and that never came about. We said, could it be? Could it be you hold and you get this at one point? No big sell-off. We needed to hold this level. This was, of course, helped a lot by the Luna and the Terra situation. Major spill. So just because you start to have some structure doesn't mean it finishes. These levels have to finish. And we were looking for a third high. Hadn't gone high enough. Bad news came in. That DeFi um, potential setup is done. So understand, Bitcoin versus tech could get killed. But it could also support. When is it over? See those alerts? It's over when it gets down here. It's over when it gets down here. It starts to become interesting. If it shows it can rally, give us a high somewhere around here and come off. Then I'm interested uh, on a relative trade. But bear in mind, everything could be deflating on a super strong dollar in this environment. Um, so let's show you one or two others. We, told, we spoke about uh, El, Elrond... So this is also a sell uh, for us. The alts, as I say, are in deep, deep trouble. Let's go to the daily. You are getting your rally. But rallies, in our opinion, should be sold. Key level at 105. Lots of reasons for that. You can find out more. Don't forget, guys. If you want all, all the real detail, this is quite it's some detail that I'm giving you macro fundamentally. But we go into this in much greater levels, deeper dives. All these, these are trades that we've been known and spoken about some time ago. You're not hearing anything else that we're discussing because that's in our community level um, and that you can go to themarketsniper.com to register, to book a call. Um, also, reset. You've got to take, uh, what's the word, plans. You've got to make plans for protecting your wealth in this environment. So this rally, in my opinion, is one that should be sold for a later trade through 27. Let's be clear, this is something coming up to an over $100 that we're telling you at 27. Never mind that actually you could have been involved in this from 150 that we told you 27. That is a massive market cap decimation that is being called. And we continue to say compliance is continuation. We keep on keeping on as long as we get compliance. Your stop should be up top here at 169. You should be short in the 150s, at the latest 145, and you should be holding for 27. You could break into this at a rally at some point around 105, and that would be an excellent possible entry, but it could go a bit higher too. It depends how long the debt rests. But all rallies should be shorted. By the way, if you're not someone with any technical trading. I'm talking about what I do when I say rallies will be shorter. It's not advice. It's n and without the understanding of money management, stop loss placement and targeting, you will lose money in this environment. Volatility should be expected. Okay, um, I think I've given you the best I can uh, for where we are. XRP is spoiling um, all notions of the court case, giving you a great structure. This is just an example of how you cannot be overly confident. Um, eventually, when any selling is done, we may end up with some future structure post all the pain that could have some form of falling wedge structure like that. You could go lower, you can make a third, you could 
potentially go that low and then still have a very good move and you could be engaging at much lower levels. Uh, but that said, this wick does point to a little bit of bid action, um, but we still expect a third impulse in there. Um, you're not, you're certainly not getting a upside HVF. It was always very flat bottomed, so that had to be suspected. So that's a possible scenario about how at some future point XRP could still come good but go a lot lower in the meantime. All right, um, there you go. We've updated you on a lot of things here. Um, I'm the Crypto Sniper. You can go to themarketsniper.com to book a call. By the way, every comment that has a WhatsApp group is a scam. The only way you engage with us is three W's, themarketsniper.com, and book a call. You'll have a chat to a friendly person who was a trader, investor, just like yourself, uh, who will walk you through both our products our options. We have a self-study. We have various price points, so you don't have to uh, go straight into the main community. You can upgrade later. Watch out for scams. There's scam telegram groups. There's scam uh, responses to this comment. We can't get YouTube to stop them from happening. Um, the only way is through the website to engage us. Please do not lose your money in these times. These people are very convincing, very persistent. They have bots and everything. Starve them of returns uh, back the channel. Give us a like and a share and we'll see you next time. Bye.